Welcome to Local Gov Strategy TV. Today I've got with me Sandy Hopkins, who is the Chief Executive of Havant and East Hampshire Councils. Uh, welcome, Sandy. Thank you. We're in times of austerity. Uh, the challenges to local government ha have never been greater. Um, how is South and East Hampshire Councils responding to that? The most obvious way we're responding is by the two councils working together. Um, whilst being very, very separate organisations, they've got separate brands, a bit like two different types of chocolate, um, very different environments, different uh, people uh, and businesses that live and operate and work in, in the areas. But we share management and uh, applying the same principles around leadership and management across the two organisations, but delivering very specific and tailored services to the people in South and East Hampshire. And c can you give me an, uh, any uh, specific examples of uh, initiatives that you're taking to improve customer services? Well, I, I guess we're going back to basics. We're, we're very much uh, wanting to operate a, a strong marketing or, uh, orientated model uh, of running the business. So we are looking at all the principles behind uh, how we start to design services for the future, rather than just building and improving services, we recognise we've got to respond to a changing uh, market environment, changing customers' uh, desires and needs, and therefore we've got to change the services. We can't just keep building on the services we already provide. So we are working uh, with our cabinets and with our 82 councillors across the two areas to uh, analyse and understand better through customer insight the needs and wants of the customers, um, both present and potentially future customers, for example businesses that might be moving into the area, and start to try and develop from the bottom up the, the services that are needed in the future. You will have inherited very different business systems, ways of doing things, uh, ICT. Um, what are you doing to integrate uh, those, uh, th those elements? I suppose the most basic thing around ICT, you, you talked about information technology and clearly the, the future is absolutely uh, in the way that we use technology and the way people interpret those systems and processes. Um, again being district councils, uh, there's a recognition that there's a lot of services delivered on the front line by district councils that require uh, very joined up thinking in terms of a county level service. Um, I've been working with Hampshire County Council. Uh, the three authorities have entered into an ICT partnership now and we're slowly moving our way through to joining up uh, a lot of the service, the ICT service uh, end of the, uh, of the process together. Um, the rest of the systems, yes, in some, in some areas are a little disjointed and over a period of time we'll be working our way through to try and at least provide the middleware to join those services up and ensure that as far as the customer is concerned uh, it is seamless. Um, few frustrations for staff in terms of having different systems at the moment uh, and again we'll be working behind the scenes in, in, in the back of, uh, back of our minds uh, in terms of how we join that up. Now, the County Council has got an enhanced role within healthcare with the movement of public health responsibilities from the NHS to the County Council. What role have you got as, as district councils uh, for, within healthcare? Well, uh, I mean, clearly there's a number of frontline services that um, are very much uh, an inherent part of prevention around healthcare. Uh, some of those are non discretionary, so there's some, some clear uh, discussions and frank debates that we need to have with uh, councillors uh, as well as partners like the uh, the County Council in terms of making sure we avoid duplication around those services. The kind of services I'm thinking about are community development. I think that's a, a fundamental uh, part of the, the jigsaw puzzle. It would be one of those areas that would be under threat in very austere times as, as um, you introduced. And I think that's something we've really got to watch because it, it does play quite a strong part, particularly in some of the deprived wards uh, that we have in, in some parts uh, of the two district areas. 
Um, we've got some wards that are in the top 10% of the most deprived in the country. And community development work, uh, sports courses, um, helping parents with parenting, particularly single parents, putting money into those kind of initiatives do, does play a very strong part in the health agenda. Uh, the other side of uh, the service that, that really formulates a, quite a strong link to health uh, agenda in the future are things like uh, very basic services that have always been part and parcel of uh, district level service delivery and that's environmental health. Um, clearly uh, maintaining the enforcement levels around environmental health is absolutely essential, uh, working with businesses and uh, with, with residents uh, in the way we provide that service. And then finally, I, I guess the, the networks and the relationships that we might have uh, with our clinical commissioning groups in local areas. You, you've got that balance of uh, um, economies of scale being created uh, at a local level through county uh, health and wellbeing boards, but at the same time you've got clinical commissioning groups being led by GPs in local areas. So the relationships uh, are going to be a very important part of the way we drive forward any strategic agenda and direct delivery on health at the front line.